In the heart of Yorkshire, a handful of dealers have assembled, keen to discover the delights that await them in the bidding room. <laughs> At the top of their trade, our five experts are French furniture and toy collector A.D. Ian, who has an eye for the weird and wonderful, modern design hunter Tash, plus James and Estelle. Oh, wow. With cash at the ready, they have no clue what's going to come through the doors today. First to arrive is Cathy, with a piece she's hoping will push all the right buttons with the dealers. My item is from the 1960s. It's in a plastic case, looks a bit like a sewing machine, and it transforms before your eyes. I don't think Nigel and Simon will know what it is. Before taking on the dealers, Cathy is having her piece valued by Simon, who's been an auctioneer for nearly 30 years. We see a lot of boxes. We do. And we never know what's going to pop out of them. No. And I, 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 I haven't got a clue. So I think we're going to have to ask Cathy. Cathy, thank you for coming. Hi. What have you bought us? I've brought you a push chair that folds up. Sure it is. It's disguised as a box. It is disguised as a box because it's easy to transport that way. Incredible. Have you had a long time? Yes, I've had it about 30 years. Have you? Yes. So you've used it? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Where did you get it from? I bought it from a flea market in Weatherby Racecourse. I had two grown-up children, but I didn't have any grandchildren, not on the horizon. Right. But I desperately wanted it. Do you remember how much you paid for it? Yes. £85, 30 years ago. That was a lot of money, then. I know. It's quite a lot of money now. So, Simon... So we click that into there. This is like magic. Click that into there. And then we'll do that. Do that. No, no hurry, Sam. No, no, I'm no, no, don't take your time. <laughs> it's. <laughs> wow. Oh. That is amazing. Just look at that. I mean, that's, that's a piece of engineering, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And it's very stylish, I think. Classic 60s, Cathy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Classic 60s. But typical Japanese technology of the time. It was all about using new materials like that and, um, and space saving. That was the whole point of it, you know. I don't um, know if you've missed the, the pocket for your umbrella. Oh, yes, I see, yeah. <laughs> That's where you put your goodies. Your goodies. I think yeah. it's great. No, it is absolutely great. And actually, you know, Cathy, it's in really good condition. I mean, this kind of plastic is notorious for cracking and getting bashed and broken, but this looks really nice. The chrome as well is still really good. And the wheels as well, almost sort of pedal car wheels almost, don't they? Your grandchildren must be very well behaved because they've looked after it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a... Not always, but mostly. So, any more questions you'd like to ask Simon? How much do you think it's worth, Simon? I think you should be looking in the region of... I'm going to say... 120, 150, 160, that kind of bracket. But you push it and you... Know. I was hoping for 200. Well, you I may well get go it. for that. Mm. Just push them, push them. Yeah. And what would you do with the 200? Well, it was our golden wedding last year and... I always wanted a bit of a do, so maybe I could have a hog roast in the back garden this year. That does sound fantastic. That's a good idea. Yeah. And I think you deserve it. Just, we're just going to sum up the bullet points right. that you need to take into the right. dealer's room so you know exactly what you're talking about. And they are... There's got to be that Japanese technology, the 60s vibe, the fact that it's quirky, it's fun, and it's all there, basically. So, I mean, it, it should sell itself. Well, I wish you the best of luck. OK, bye-bye. Bye-bye. So they've got to work hard to get Cathy a hog roast now, yeah. haven't they? Simon said 120 to 160. It was a bit less than I thought, but then it's up to me to push it. Armed with Simon's expertise, Cathy is off to face the dealers, including lover of all things retro Estelle and James, who is often tempted by unusual pieces. I think they'll be interested. I think they'll be curious. I'm not going to go without putting up a fight. Hello. 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 What's your name? Cathy. Do you want to reveal what it is? Please. Oh. Well, that's helped. I still don't know <laughs> what it is. <laughs> um, what oh. Oh. 
What on, what on earth is that? <laughs> oh, right, there's another... Wi right, OK. Good grief. I think oh, it's something it's you like take on holiday one. with you. Like a folding pushchair would yeah. be. I'm, I'm absolutely mouth open. It's just unbelievable. It I've Jap never seen anything like it in my life. Is it Japanese? Japanese it is, yes. 1960s. The colours are bang on the yeah. year, though, aren't they? I like how Japanese it is. You can just see that in Tokyo. So, and actually... It's, it's just your size. I mean, they could put their poodles in it, couldn't they? It is just ingenious how it folds down into that yeah. little box. But it is, it screams sixties, and it does scream Japanese. It's Was this used in your home? Yes, yes, I've had it 30 years. Do you know what we could do, Ian? What's that? If I came up to you on a Sunday morning... Yeah. ..with a picnic... Yeah. ..and I could put you in it... Oh yeah. Take you around the racetrack at Worcester. Oh, would you? <laughs> As I'm sitting there, I can go, crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to sell this? Well, last year we celebrated our golden wedding anniversary, oh, which we couldn't have you. a do, and I always wanted to have a bit of a do. Oh. Because when I got married, I got married at Leeds Register Office, 9 o'clock in the morning, and with 21 guests. My husband, the best man, and my brother went to see Leeds United and Liverpool in a friendly. <laughs> and I, On your so, wedding day? I went home and cooked a chicken, so I thought... <laughs> I'm going to have a hog roast in my back garden, Fantastic so... Fantastic idea. So, I think we've uh, chatted about it enough. Should we start the bidding? Let's go for it. The Japanese Dream Stroller is valued at 120 to 160 pounds. But Cathy thinks she can do even better. Time to see if she gets that hog roast. I'm going to start the bidding at 30 pounds. 40 pounds. I'll go 50 pounds on it. Don't forget, I want to have a really I good do. do in the back there. Yeah. Right, old do. Nigel thinks he's coming. That's <laughs> it. Have, have you told him he's not? Well, if I get enough, he can come. Okay. So, 60. 70 pounds. 80 pounds. I want more than that. A lot more? Well, the hog roast costs 200 pounds. The whole village is coming. Cathy wants a do. 100. 110. I'm out, I'm afraid. Sorry. I'll go 120 and then I'm out. Top I would do is 125. That would be my last bid on it. I don't think so. I think it's going home with me. I'll give you 130 for it. That's really kind of you, but I, I want... I know it is. I want a bit more. Oh. What's the lowest you'd accept? 160. What did Simon value this at? Simon said 120 to 160. Cathy, James and I have just been having a little bit of a chat. Would you accept 160 from the pair of us? So 80 each. 180 would be better. <laughs> You're good, you are. It's cost me more than that to get here. OK. OK, yeah, then you've got to do... Yeah, yeah, between the two right. of us. Yeah, yeah. Well, done. well done. Fantastic, well brilliant. Done. Well done, Cathy. Oh, I like it. Get your money out, guys. So, Cathy seals a deal for £20 above Simon's top valuation of £160. I used my haggling skills to push them up to 180 I tried for more, but couldn't get there, and I thought better to take what, what they were offering. They were happy with it, and I was. Thank you so much, Cathy. Thank you for buying it. it. And, uh, That's thank all right. you. Take care. Let's Have a lovely it. hog roast. Yeah. I'm Enjoy. sure we will. Have a good day. See thank you later. You. Bye. 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 We can still push you around, don't worry, Ian. You push me around anyway. You just push me around all day. Next in are Anthony and his daughter Ava with a family heirloom they hope can tempt the dealers to part with their cash. My item is very collectible, practical, um, and it's got an ingenious design. I do think that it is a great item. I do think there will be interest in it. I do think there's... Um, I do need to stop saying I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ava, hello. Hello. Nice to meet you, and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nigel. Can you tell us about these lovely bookcases, where they came from? Yes, well, they actually came from my great grandma. Um, this is her doing a bit in the in World War Two. Where, where was that picture taken? It was in Huddersfield. All oh, right. Um, she was doing a bit as a chimney sweep. Yes, yeah, so it's been passed down from generation to generation, and 
uh, it's ended up with, with us. And we know they're antique. Yeah. We know they're from maybe around the 1920s. Right. We know they're very collectible, but that's about as far, you know, as far as we know. Well, you've come to the right place because Simon is an expert. I, I can tell you we've got a pair, mm -hmm. uh, slightly different in colour. These almost remind me of ones that were sort of perhaps purchased for an office environment, maybe solicitor's office or oh. a bank or something like that for storing files, maybe. Um, but, you know, simple system. I mean, it all just slots together, oh. Nigel, doesn't it? You just sort of... Oh, I So see. if you wanted an extra section on there now, you could just add another section. You could have a slightly smaller one and a bigger one. Bigger one. Wow, oh, and yeah. so they're English? Uh, German, German, actually, yeah, by a company which I've just actually seen the label in there, yeah. Nigel. If I open this... Yeah, there we go. We've got the printed label inside for Globe Vernick, who were right. the company that made them. Yep. Well-known company, actually. And they started in 1899, so late 1800s, um, by Mr Otto Vernick. Um, and he sort of designed these um, sectional bookcases, as we call them. So where have they been sitting in your house? They've been sitting in the loft, unfortunately. Material daughter's quite accident-prone, so we're just worried that she might obviously fall and break them. So you thought, well, it's time to, to move on. Yeah, so definitely, yeah. Whatever you make, a bit of money, we hope, what would, you, what would you like to do with the money? Well, I think Ava would really like to go somewhere, wouldn't you? I'd like to go on a holiday to Greece. Have you ever been to Greece before? Yeah. And you liked it? Yeah. Well, I think it's a very good idea. Yeah, absolutely. So would you like to ask Simon what they think that were? Simon, what's it worth? Well, I'm, I look at them as a pair. And although the market possibly isn't as strong as it used to be in years gone by, I'm going to say for the pair, Four to five hundred pounds. How does that sound? That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds really good. Um, we were hoping around that mark. So when you go into the bidding room, it's best to have all the sort of bullet points up your sleeve so you know exactly what you're talking about. So Simon, just run us through. Yeah, well, easy ones to remember, really. Globe Vernick, that's the maker, uh, early 1900s, I reckon about 1920-ish. A pair, which is good, always in fashion. I wish you lots of success. Be firm, be tough. Yep. Good cop, bad cop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly where you play. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. 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 Simon valued the uh, bookcase at four to five hundred. I think I can push them to a bit of a higher price than five hundred. And it's been through our family over generations, so I'm hoping that story will, will help sell it as well. Hello. 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 Hi, everyone. Hello. And what are your names? My name's Anthony. And Hi, this Ava. Is... Hello. Anthony and Ava. Hi. Hello. Nice Hello. Love the matching <laughs> outfits, by the way. Yeah. That wasn't Love. intentional. Was it not? <laughs> no, 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 just coincidence. <laughs> and I'm loving these bookcases. They're kind of on my want list for home furnishing. Oh, dear. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. I nice see that there's two. Yeah. I mean, they are stackable, so you could actually interchange them. And make them make taller. Make them higher as well, yeah. yes. So is this something that you've had in your own, own house? No, it actually came from my great-grandma. I've got a, a picture here. I was just going to say, what's the picture? Yeah, it's my great-grandma doing a bit for World War II. She were a chimney sweep, so... Oh, wow. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. These were hers, yeah. They got passed down to my parents and then, and then to, to our family. And then I can see just through the glass of that one, it's got globe vernica on there. Is that what you want? That's... For your little house. I do, I do. I need <laughs> oh. this so much. We're going to have a problem here, aren't we? So, yeah, so they... And they're all stackable, so they literally will just slot on each other. So yeah, you can alter the heights, can't you? Yeah, have a go. Just don't break them. Yeah, I know. That's the <laughs> thing with these is the glass is so easily broken. In fact, I have broken these in the past. Oh, great. Oh, dear. <laughs> Shall I carry on? Got the wrong person doing this. OK, so if we get the top off that one... Yeah. We'll put that one on there. Like. Does that suit you, Tasha? Do you want it any higher? Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't, don't do any more troubling with that. <laughs> well done, mate. Why, thank you. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, what else did Simon tell you about these? 
Simon Fotler is really popular because they've got a very good market with a, quite, and the and they're in they're still in trend and they've been in trend for quite a while. And very practical. Yeah, and they're very practical. Wow. Okay. Well, that's told us then. Okay. Well, let's start the bidding. The antique barrister's bookcases are valued at four to five hundred pounds, but can Anthony and Ava stack up a deal for an even higher price? So I'm going to kick you off at hundred pounds. One twenty. One fifty. One sixty. Oh. Oh, you beat me. One eighty. One ninety. Come on, you can push it a bit more. <laughs> Two hundred. 210. 220. 230. 240. Come on, guys. 250. 260 with me, then. 280. I'm not going to be bidding any further on that one. Thank you for bringing them in, though. They are amazing. Thank you. I'll top it up. £300. 310. 310. There's a lot of history in them, and uh, they're they're a very sought after make. Mm. Three twenty five. <laughs> Come on, guys! Don't disappoint a nine year old. <laughs> Come on, Ian. Look. Excuse me. <laughs> Gra <laughs> grandma's not happy. Hello, grandma. Grandma's not happy with that. <laughs> Great grandma's not happy with that offer. I am feeling quite intimidated now. Quite. Yes, you know, you put her closer. <laughs> <laughs> I can see what she's like from here. <laughs> Three thirty five. That's it, I think. Just because that was so funny, I will go 350, and that's my final bid. 360. Oh, here we go. And I, yeah, and, and I am done now. I'm going to say I am out. Are you listening to me, love? 375. She just nodded. <laughs> Wouldn't that be spooky? Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us what Simon valued them at? Yeah, four to five hundred pounds. Yeah, I'd go to 420. Would you go 450? Mm, I'd do 450, yeah. Could you move to 475? 470, we've got a deal. <laughs> we'll accept that. Yeah, yeah. well done. Yeah. Thank you. Simon's valuation was four to five hundred pounds, uh, and we sold it for four seventy, um, which we're happy about. We're gonna save up for a holiday to Greece. Yeah, you know we've, we've been waiting for a holiday for quite a long time now, so it'd be it'd be lovely to get away. Brilliant, great nice to see meet you. you all. Thank you. Ah, well done. Nice. I'm a bit gutted. Can I rent the top one to put my little shoe cozy and my toys and that? Fifty pound a day, yeah. Can I rent one for me crisps? You need a bigger cabinet, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wrong. Third into our Yorkshire HQ is Sue, with something she hopes will enchant the dealers. The item I bought today is Japanese. It's long, colourful, flowing, intricate, very beautiful. I don't think it's something they've possibly seen before. It's unique. Look at that. Stunning. It's fabulous. Absolutely and stunning. It's, I think it probably belongs to a, a woman rather than a man, do you think? I think so. Yes. Definitely, definitely. Even though it reminds me slightly of You Only Live Twice. Of course. Um, Charles Gray wearing a kimono. Yes, yes. Were they yeah. sort of um, for ceremonial purpose? I think this would probably be a wedding one, you know. Well, Sue will tell us all about it. I hope so. <laughs> Hello, Sue. Hello. Well, thank you so much for bringing this beautiful thing in. You're welcome. Do you often wear it? <laughs> I've only ever worn it once. I think you should wear it all the time. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? It is. It's amazing. Where did you find it? Well, many years ago, when I was a mere 22, I took part in a World Hairdressing Congress. And um, I had my hair cut on stage, and we also had to do this little dance around. And as a, a gift afterwards, they gave us these kimonos. Could you do the dance around now for us? Yes, it was all sort of like this, <laughs> holding it up above your head. Beautiful. So Simon is an expert on kimonos. <laughs> so let's ask him. The, the first thing 
is the quality. I just, I just love it, you know. It's yeah. just wow, isn't it? It's got that wow factor. The main focus on the back here is got, I think we'd have to bird of paradise. Yes. And the symbolism of that would say to me sort of love, um, affection, thoughtfulness. It was all this sort of symbolism, wasn't it? Obviously, we're looking at the back here. If I just... I mean, the, the, the front is equally as stunning, isn't it? You know, yes. it's all in silk. Do you think that's all hand-stitched? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes, it would have been. No-one would have been exactly the same. No, it, you know? they're all different, yes. And very weighty. Yeah, it's it the is. the weight of it, it that is gets you. It is very well, heavy. Yeah. Difficult to date. I'm, I'm, I'm probably saying it is probably mid-20th century. Mm. I don't think there's a huge, huge age to it. Possibly the 1960s, 70s, maybe, that possibly, sort of vintage. Yeah. And you've kept it really well. The colours are really sharp, so it's obviously been kept out of sunlight. Yes. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Stunning. Which dealer do you think is going to have a crack at this? I think we've got Estelle next door today who deals in 1970s vintage and she is, she's a girl who loves colour. So let's ask that all-important question. How much, Simon, do you think it's worth? <laughs> what sells it for me, Sue, is the quality. Yes. If it was in a, a decent Oriental-themed auction, I could see a pre-sale estimate on this of... Five to eight hundred, that kind of bracket. Does that sound good? Um, yeah, bearing in mind that it's all silk and it's all hand sewn and things, mm. I thought maybe it might, re you know, go a little higher than that. I think you'll do really well. Thank you. Just I hope so. Target Estelle. Okay. Target her. She's my favourite. She's your favourite. <laughs> Even better. And AD might look quite good in it. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for bringing it in. Thank you. Simon valued my item between five and eight hundred pounds because it's such an intricate, well kept item. I'd be happy if it sold towards the higher end. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? And what's your name? My name is Sue. Hello, Hello Sue. Hello. Sue. Hi, Sue. Um, we're all a bit intrigued. I think you'll be very surprised. Go on then. <gasps> oh, wow. 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 It was gifted to me back in 1985. Okay. I took part in the World Hairdressing Congress, and oh, at the wow. end of that, they gifted us one of these. Do you know, Sue, I think this is a bit of me. Go ahead, try it on. Well, I think if I stood behind it... We would be able to see you. <laughs> <laughs> James, you're very rude. Why don't you get a little, little book to stand on or something? <laughs> you can't <laughs> <read it. laughs> <laughs> what do you it think? It suits you, sir. Suits Is it me? You, yeah. yeah. Does it go well with my complexion? It does, does yes. It? Yeah. It's that, 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 that grey pallor. Does it give you that little bit of mystic about me? <laughs> <laughs> I do love a kimono, actually. I'm going to have a little look. And the amazing thing about the kimono is that they've been in fashion for the last couple of years. Um, do you know if it's actually in silk? Yes, it's silk, silk thread, and it's all hand-stitched. Yeah. Do you know how many of these are gifted? They're all one-offs. OK. Yeah. Wow. I, I love kimonos and I love, the, you know, the symbolism behind them. You've got the birds of paradise, which actually looks like it's been done in a bullion thread, which is like a, a gold thread. I love that it's got the weighted... Yes. ..the hem as well, which is the wadded. Nicely padded. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, who looks better in it, me or Ian? Ian. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. definitely, definitely yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's start the bidding. The hand-stitched vintage kimono has been valued at five to eight hundred pounds, but Sue is hoping to get at least that. Let the haggling begin. So I am going to start you off at a hundred pounds. One fifty. Straight in there, Esther. Two hundred. I know how much kimonos are worth. Two fifty. Yeah, I'm not going to bid, so I'm out. Imagine the work that's gone into that. 260. 270. 280. 290. 300 pounds. 310. Come on. <laughs> 320. No. Um, I'll go 380. 390. No. I'm not going to bid anymore. I think you're being a bit mean, so let's try and nudge it up a little bit. 
Ian, are you out? Uh, do you know I am? Because if I put it on, I'm just going to fall over it with the height I am. AD. I don't know, mate. I can't... I can't, um... I don't know. I'm probably going to kick myself, but just because I don't know enough about them, mm. I'm going to pull out. Sorry. No problem. So, bids for me at 3.90. No, I'm going to say no, then. But where do you need to be for it to stay here today? Above 500. I'm not going to go to 500. No problem at all. Sorry, Sue. Oh, we sorry. failed you today. Uh, can I ask you, though, what did Simon value it at? Between five and 800. Really? Did he? Yeah. Estelle was the one that was mainly interested in it, but unfortunately, she just couldn't go high enough for the price that I wanted. <laughs> it was a pleasure to come along and show it. Oh, oh thank you. No, it was absolutely. a pleasure to see it. Thanks very much. Bye bye. I've had a great day here. I've learned a lot more about the kimono. I shall keep it for the time being and maybe find a specialist market for it. Oh. Estelle, are you going to re regret that? For me to try and get 800 for that would be a big push. Yeah. I was happy with where I was at with mm. it. Next in is Roger, with a collection from his youth that he's hoping will have the dealers licking their lips. I've brought in a collection today which represent pubs, which many of them have disappeared, and it's a part of pub history. They're varied, they're original, they're in good condition, and it's something I'm sure the dealers haven't quite seen before. They're quite pretty things, aren't they? Yes. Are they all to do with pubs? I think so. All modelled on uh, actual pub signs. I mean, if you had a pub, what would you call it? I don't know. Well, I think maybe the, the bidding room boozer. What do you think? <laughs> oh. A certain ring, doesn't it? Anyway, I think that we're going to have to ask Roger. Roger, come on in. Oh, nice to meet you, gentlemen. Nice to meet you. I'll have a pint, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, these collection of cars shouldn't be representative of how I spent my youth. Well, tell me the story. How did you acquire Well, them? these were made in the 1940s and 1950s, and I was uh, still at school at that time. You'd really only get one if you went in and bought a pint, but being these cheeky kids, used to go in and ask the publican, can I have a pub sign? He'd either tell you to get lost or maybe give you one to get you out of the place. Well, let's ask Simon, because he's an expert at all these pub... <laughs> pubs, <laughs> just... Yeah, he's an expert on pubs. Tell us about these, Simon. Well, I mean, they, they, they all relate to, to the Whitbread brewery, don't they, Roger? So mm -hmm. it was a great form of advertising, wasn't it? And then they'd put a little bit of info, wouldn't they, on the back yes. about how the pub name came about, etc. They're quality items to me. But, I mean, Roger's, Roger's got... <laughs> very <laughs> extensive... 197, uh, 197 actual cards here. Some yeah. are duplicates, admittedly. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Are they collectible? Oh, they are indeed, yeah. especially when you get a nice quantity like that. Yeah. I've had an idea here. Mm -hmm. It'd be quite good if you put them under a perspex top on a bar. Oh, yeah, well, that'd be effective, yeah. wouldn't it? And be, I mean, you could do it in a single or doubled. You could... all sorts of ways. Yeah. Really colourful. Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, anything else you want to ask Simon? What value would you put on mm. something like this? That is a good question, Roger. I mean, you've got a large quantity of 197, I think we said, in total. <sighs> my, my feeling is... 200 to 250. Have that figure in mind. Anything below that, I would be a little hesitant to let them go, to be honest. Roger, thank you very much for bringing them in. They're really fascinating. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye. Simon has valued them at somewhere between 200 and 250. I'm going to play it by ear and see what they come up with. I'm not going to try to have anything excessive, but something which I think is going to be a fair value. Hi. Hello. 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 Oh, hello, Pleased to meet you. My name is Roger Barton. Hello. Roger. Hello, Roger. Hello. Hello, Roger. There's a man with a fine taste in waistcoats. Well, I'm not selling this, though, as you say. Very nice. But what, but, but what I am selling is a personal collection of pub signs which were produced between 1940s and the 1950s. And they were sort of like a, a, a high quality flyer. Of advertising flyer. Oh, well, it's it, like a business card sort of thing. Uh, they're, they're sort of. So every time you ordered a pint, you get like a little yeah. card. The colours, Roger, are really quite vibrant, and it does tell you a little bit about the pubs on the back. So this one that says the Star Inn at Newington, and it mm. says like design MC Bolston, built 
uh, watering Bury Brewery 1949. They are nice to look at, I can tell, but um, it's a very niche, extremely niche market. I spoke, yes. All this stuff, all this stuff that's built up inside us of memories with kids with pubs, you know, like getting the, putting a 2p in the nut machine again, getting a handful of nuts. I think all that stuff should come back. I really do. And things that you can collect should come back. And it would get yes. people back in the premises. And I think this is a collection which reflects an era which has just gone by. Thanks for all the info, but I think we need to crack on with some bidding, do you? The collection of pub signs is valued at 200 to 250 pounds. Over to Roger to see if he can sell it for that kind of price. I would start it at, like... I know it's going to sound really low and really insulting, Roger, but £10. Because I just don't know where to start with it. I'm going to crack on at 50 OK. Mm. Mm. Roger, I'm unfortunately not going to bid on this. And that's mainly because in years of collecting things, you've probably got a, a good value in mind. And I, I won't be able to meet that. I think the problem I've got is the fact that I would want to throw lots of money at it or at them, rather, to get them displayed properly. And I think that would then eat into my profits. Where's everybody at? I'm going to have to sell them out. And thank you, Roger, but I don't think I'll be bidding. What would be your bottom line for the set? I, I think about 200. Roger, I'd give you 100 quid for them. I'd take a punt at 100 pounds. What about splitting the difference between my figure and yours? Mm. What did Simon and Nigel value them at? 200 to 250. I'll move a little bit. 120. 140 and we... we no, one, I'm going to stick at 120. I'm really sorry. Mm. I think we could, the final offer, we could do a deal at 140. No, He's I'm a gonna, trier, isn't I'm he? He's a trier. <laughs> and I really, really appreciate it, but no, I'm going to stick at 120. Hmm. Sorry. OK. Well, I think we can't do a deal at that price. Roger, I'll give you 130. Final bid, 130. Go on, go on Roger. OK, we'll do it at 130. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I'm pleased there was a sale made, but it was hard going. I'm, I'm sure another another tenner would uh, would um, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but obviously, eighty gave me a hundred and thirty. One twenty. <laughs> One forty, Roger. You've done it. You've won me over. He, he then upped it by ten pounds to hundred and forty, and I was pleased with this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 <sighs> What a mighty fine man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How could I not? Lovely. For goodness sake. You do realise that those are antique now, the time that took. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll buy them now. I tell you what, James, I don't drink it. I need a pint after that laugh. <laughs>The item I brought along today is a very rare item. It's very beautiful to look at, and it's a kind of item that everyone would have owned if they could write during the 1910s and early 1920s. I think I have a clue what that might be. It comes from that umbrella description of trench art. I think you're right. We can discover more <laughs> if we ask Kevin, can't we? Good, good. Kevin, hello, nice to meet you. Hello. Tell me, um, where did you find this? Um, I bought it off a well-known internet auction site. OK. And I managed to get it at a really good price. Did you? What was the price? 175 so half price they were asking. Right, fantastic. Well done, you. And are you a collector of trench art? I am. I've got quite a lot, actually. I'm an archaeologist in my day job, so I collect anything from about 1800 upwards. And I, right. I love all things World War I. OK. And this was incredibly unusual. I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. I suppose you could say trench art is all unique. Is that not right, Simon? <laughs> but no, we see, we see a lot of trench art. There was always that theory, wasn't there, that a lot of it wasn't actually done in the trenches. Yeah, it was yeah. done after by, you know, wounded soldiers or, or just people churning it out. But this I love because it's so busy. 
The first thing I thought was ink stamp, because we've got these two little pull-out drawers at the front, Kevin, yeah. haven't we? Be nibs in there. You could have nibs, and then we've got the two holes in the top, so I don't know whether there were perhaps a little glass ink well maybe had sat in there. We've got this slot at the top to put a photograph in. I don't know, have you done a bit of research on who that is, Kevin, at all? Um, yeah, I've done a bit of research. That's General Foch, who would eventually become the Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces and win World War I. All of the bullets have 1914 and 15 on them. Mm. So I think this is somebody like a, a French captain in the war, in the trenches, and he's got a big hero worship for General Foch. So, do you have any final questions to ask, Simon? How much do you think it's worth, please? Well, you say you paid, I think, 175 you yeah. said, didn't you, Kevin? When I first saw it, I had 150, 200 in my head. So I, I think you'll get your money back and you might be able to push them for a little profit. That sounds brilliant. Just before you go into the dealer's room, it's always good to have, you know, all the bullet points, and I can say that genuinely. <laughs> the bullet points to take with you, so you're armed with all the info you need. Trench art, of course, and just push the fact that it's a cut above the rest, if you like. It's busy, it's complete. And, and, and push that connection with Foch, Kevin, because he was such a well-known and highly decorated military figure that that, you know, should ease it up for you as well. So there you go, you're armed with all the goodies, and I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much, thank you. Bye. He should do OK with it. I think so, don't you? I mean... I've never seen one like that, I no, must admit. But like the idea of, you know, you go back to the battlefield, take your new wife, let's say, mm. to show where you've been fighting, and there'll be sort of chaps around there saying, would you like to buy this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, a bit of treasure. Yeah. That's what happened. That's probably what happened, yeah. exactly. Simon valued the inkwell at 150 to 200 pounds. I bought it for 175 pounds, so I was hoping the valuation would be more, but I'm hoping my boyish charm might just push the price up a little bit more if I give them a nice smile. Hello there. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good Hi. smile. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the bidding room. What's your name? Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Hello. Hello everyone. Hello. Hello. Take the cloth off. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. <laughs> Oh. Oh, right, OK. So I'm just going to say what I see. It's obviously trench art made out of copper and casings of rifle bullets. It's uh, VW 1914, so First World War. Yep, spot on. Uh, it's got a couple of little drawers in here, really quite sweet little drawers. Oh, wow. Um, two of those with holes in the top, I don't know. That for inkwells, maybe. Yeah, it's a charming piece of like, naive trench art. Um, so, Kevin, why are you parting with it? I'm parting with it because, at the age of 48, I am finally getting married to the love of my life. Hey! Oh, well, fantastic. And what's her name? Her name is Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Uh, You're a very lucky girl. Did I just say you're girl. never 48? I am indeed. That's yeah. 48 inches tall and 48 years. <laughs> <laughs> Comes in good packages, mate. <laughs> I'm just going to have a quick look at it because um, I do like a little desk tidy myself. Oh, that is nice, actually. I sell to a lot of creative people, artists, etc., um, and calligraphers, wedding um, stationery makers, and something like this will be perfect for them. So then, everybody, I think that's enough chit-chat. Shall we crack on with the bidding? It seems there's interest in the inkwell. So, can Kevin do better than the valuation of 150 to 200 pounds and boost his wedding fund? I'll start it at £100. Pounds. 110 I'll go 120 I want this to be a special day for Sarah. As much as I love it, Kevin, it's not my kind of thing that I specialise in, so I won't be bidding. I'm out. There's not enough left in it for me, so I'm out. Sorry. It's gone quiet. Yeah, it has gone quiet. 130 <laughs> let's, let's jiggle it up a bit. I'm also out, actually, because I, I, I don't generally buy trench art, as nice as it is. But I think this is a bit of tash. Mm. No, it's gone too high now. That's a problem. Are you out, then? I'm out. I paid Ian 175 for it. And I wouldn't want to lose on it, but I would accept what I paid for it. I can't go that high. I'm just thinking of my future wife on her wedding day. <laughs> Tears in her eyes. I'm just thinking how much I can sell it for. 
I can do one, 140 at a push, but that would be it. You wouldn't do me 150 for our no, future kids? I wouldn't, cos I'm What was that? It. You'd do 150 for what? For our future kids. Not ours. <laughs> Not our future kids. <laughs> <laughs> you, got a you, got <laughs> <laughs> you got a proposition, there he is! Sarah, Sarah, <laughs> cancel that wedding, love. Kevin, if only I had noticed. Kevin, I tell you what, let's have a bit more fun. I'll flip a coin. Yeah. 150 tails. 175 heads. <laughs> no. <laughs> 160 heads. One, 150 tails, 160 heads. 150 tails, 160 heads. Sound okay. good. <laughs> heads. Hey! <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> Lesson learned about gambling. In all honesty, I love it anyway. And I'm I still glad. think, to be fair, I still think there's a profit in it. You hope so. I had a great time in the bidding room. Everyone was so lovely. I could have done with a bit more for it, but I think in the end it went to a good home. 60 crisp ones, mate. Ian paid £160 for the inkwell. The money is going to go to my fiance, who will put it towards our wedding fund. So it's now out of my hands. Yeah. yeah congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> I think the thing that makes that is there are so many bullets on it. And I love the fact that it's always that beauty. You've got beauty that's come from tragedy. A very profound statement. Yeah.